Good morning. It's half past six. Now, I didn't think I slept that well last night, but I didn't really surface until 6 a.m. and it was already getting light, so, and I remember having a couple of really weird dreams, so I think I actually probably did sleep. Uh, the duvet was a really good option. I was so warm last night. I was sleeping in all my clothes and I had to take off my hoodie because it was too warm. Uh, it was quite busy till late out here, probably about 11 o'clock, and it went really quiet and the winds dropped. And this morning I've been out and I've just got some chains and some new clothes and what have you. And it's so warm out. It's been 17 degrees all night. And although I don't feel like I was very protected here, because when you sleep in your car you end up with a lot of condensation, my windows are all steamed up, so you can't see that I'm in here anyway. So, morning coffee. So yeah, not bad. It's gorgeous out there. I can already hear all the birds down on the water, peeping away like they do. I can hear the seagulls. I feel reasonably awake actually, so I think I must have had sleep. Right, I'm going to get myself organised. I'm going to have a wash. Um, I've put the bed away so the front of the car is usable. I'm going then going to what am I then going to do? I don't blooming know. How do I know what I'm gonna do? Oh, hello Mr. Magpie. Um what am I gonna do? Uh yeah, get organised. And I wanna get walking down there. I'm going to drink my coffee before I go, I think. It's not going to be that hot. Seagulls coming over. So I've almost mastered the sleeping arrangements. I still can't quite stretch out, and because I get sciatica in my left leg, this leg aches during the night, so that's why I constantly shift and turn until it stops. Can't do that in a very narrow car, but I couldn't even lay completely flat and stretch my legs out. The problem is that at the head end, these headboards are really narrow, and I can't get all the way up, so I'm losing about probably four or five inches of space, which would give me enough leg room. So I need to work out how to extend that shelf um, so that I, so that my head is on it rather than me constantly falling off it. Um, I had a big wide pillow on it, but because I'm shifting around all night, it falls off. So I need to do that better. But I can work that out. I mean, I don't camp, car camp often enough to have resolved all this. So I need to... Um, just need to resolve that bit and I think I'm pretty much there because the duvet definitely worked. I was so warm. Although it has been weirdly warm. It was 17 degrees all night, which is pretty rare. Um, right, I'm going to have a wash, sort myself out and um, start walking. to say there is a van parked up in front of me and he saw me in my car last night and kind of looked and I thought oh god I'm going to get a knock later on. But when he parked up he kind of walked down the road and we disappeared for about an hour and then he came back 
and were faffed around in the van for a while. I thought what was going on. And it appears that he has also slept in his van. So, I don't know whether he lives in his van, or it's just a one-off thing. So there is somebody else here. It's the first time I've ever seen anyone in an undesignated area sleeping in their vehicle. I don't know his is a proper van though, but he's got curtains to draw back from the cabin, so I suspect he might. And the other amazing thing was, I didn't get up once during the night to go for a wee. That is unheard of with me these days. So I was pretty chuffed about that. Great, just like eating sweets, isn't it? Enough food there to get me through. I still have bread, another pasta, um, all sorts of bits and pieces that I can eat um, when I get back as like a lunch, whatever time I get back, and then I can drive home, um, and then we'll get done. to Mr. Van Man, he was just getting out of his van. We clocked each other like, yeah, you slept in your vehicle last night. And he's just about to leave, he's, he's just put his engine on. Just got to show you this morning view. The only thing that was a bit annoying about last night was those solar street lights and they are really bright. I was right in the line of fire. And because I had a, a very light coloured duvet, because that's all I have, it must have stood out a mile. So once the condensation had built up in the car after about, about 11 o'clock it started to kick in, you couldn't really see anything. So that was really good. Um, so I say it wasn't breezy this morning, but suddenly it's really, really breezy. But it's warm, it's really fresh. I feel absolutely buzzing this morning. Oh wow, tide's out again. Look at this. This place is amazing. If I ever want a quick weekend or a couple of days away at the beach, this is where I'm going to come. It's so accessible and it's nice and it's like well looked after and happiness making. And that beach down there, the lady there with her dog. Dog walkers absolutely everywhere here, as you might expect. That beautiful sunrise. It's going to be a fabulous 24, I think it might even be 26 later today. I've, uh, I've changed, I've got a t-shirt on, I've got a, a zip-up hoodie and my little denim waistcoat, which I love wearing because it's got two inside pockets. So I can put my regular phone inside and have easy access to it without having to wear a, another belt or put it in my rucksack. Um, but it's also great because when it gets warm, I can remove those layers, tie them around my waist, and I'm cooler. God, I love this place. Tiny horses. Look at the foal. 
Look at the little babies. Oh my god, they're so cute. I've never seen a baby Shetland before. Or a baby miniature. I think someone's coming to say hello. Hello. Hello, beautifuls. <gasps> Look at you. Hello, gorgeous. <gasps> Little soft nosies. Hello. 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 I don't get anything for you, I'm afraid. No. Nothing for you. Your mama won't be impressed. I know. Hello, mama. Hello, mama. If I had a carrot, I'd give you a carrot. I didn't bring any carrots. It's so pretty. Look at the little tiny one. Oh my god, they're so cute. And little ones up there. Tiny horses make your day, right? Look, there's even more up there. Horses everywhere. Right, let's get on. <laughs> We're in no rush today. I've got like the whole day and it's still only seven o'clock. I don't know why I feel like I need to rush. I'm not very good at slowing down. I've always, you know, got to hit a deadline. When you're car camping, if you make a long list of things to do, it's like, right, I need to make sure I get all these things done. And then you rush to make sure you've done them all. And then you're sitting around for three hours because you've done everything too early, like yesterday. I do that every time. I could have slowed right down yesterday. I could have left later. I could have walked a lot slower, but I find it really hard to slow down. I can't just sit there and look at scenery for an hour, which is really annoying because I'd love to be able to just be able to do that. So I don't really want to be back at the car until say, between one and two, I have lots of time. I don't think I'm going to be able to fill all that time <laughs> because I've only got the one thing to do today and that's just be a beach tourist. It's just this incredible expanse of sea. just amazing. Right, let's walk. Every single bench I've seen so far since I've been in this whole area is dedicated to somebody. And a lot of them have little flowers on them. You have little posy pots for them. And I think that is so amazing. It just adds a little level that you can read about somebody that loved that place. So good. There are some facts from history set into plaques in the ground. So let's have a look and see what some of these say. promenade is really clean. I think they try to keep this as, try and keep on top of the litter bugs 
and empty the bins. We're probably just out of tourist season now though, so hopefully their job will get a bit easier now. I'm learning stuff. It's pretty cool. these stones everywhere. I imagine they're trying to keep the sea back because they get very high tides here and I imagine in winter this is brutal. See these rocks are really boulders, they're huge. so windy again now. front here. I wonder if these are guest houses rather than homes. That's a hotel on the end I'm sure. Could be apartments actually. Around our first point in our walk. Probably built as guest houses because of their size. Or maybe they weren't, but they would have been guest houses at some point, I would imagine. They all look private now, though. Nice if you can get it, isn't it? A big house like that. Reach the next point, and the sun is round the corner. Look at that. I think that's our destination there in the distance. A big white building, it's just beyond behind the green box. Look at all that. So that stays green. This building there. there, that'll be open later I should imagine.
that high here. Central Morecambe. This is the town centre, this is where all the tourists will hang out in holiday season and now it's just doing its thing as a town. You'll still get some holiday makers whilst the weather holds. Um, it's now the end of the first week of September and <laughs> it's so windy here. Oh dear. Right, let's stride on. I can see my final destination in front of me. That's the most enormous woodlouse I've ever seen. That must be a special breed because woodlice do not get that big. Maybe it's a beach variety, but it's huge. Look at these beach style homes. A lot of these were bed breakfasts and boarding houses. Imagine growing up here. So there's been one thing in the back of my mind all the time I've walked up here. And that if, uh, if you know your 70s and 80s sitcoms and, and comedy and TV comedy you may know, you probably know about Morecambe and Wise and Eric Morecambe, perhaps not surprisingly, came from Morecambe now Morecambe wasn't his surname but he took it as his stage name And for the life of me, I cannot remember what his birth surname was. But you'll get it all up on here. Now, not that many years ago, they made a, a dramatisation of Eric and Ernie's careers. How they met, how they started out, all that sort of thing. And up here on the left is the Midland Hotel, which I've seen on the internet and it features in the film. It's a really, well, from the photographs, it looks like a really classy looking hotel, very much of its time and it's, it's uh, the way it was built. So, we're going to go and have a look at that. And then I'm going to dip into Morrison's to use the facilities. Might even treat myself to a, a croissant. Because why not? How often we get to eat a croissant? I think I have to turn right at Aldi to get to Morrison's. But we'll go and look at the hotel first, and then we'll do that, and then we'll move on to our second landmark. And then we can potter about. Look at this fabulous beach. Well, 
I'll have to walk back along some of this beach if it's not too busy. It probably won't be too bad as it's Friday and all the kids are back at school now. So it shouldn't be too busy. So let's go and look at the hotel, see if, it's, if it is as impressive in real life as it is in photographs. This is the station. We've got the tourists in. Straight to the hotels. So this is the Midland Hotel. It's really impressive actually. Very much of its time. But it's gorgeous. I love it. That lovely rounded front. And it follows the line of the beach. Put some information up about it. all the way around following the beach here I would love to come here and stay here just one night I have a feeling it's probably a bit dated inside I could be completely wrong about that spectacular Midland Hotel. Just at the Morrisons and they've put birds on the tops of all their bollards. So there's all different types. They've got cormorants, puffins, pigeons, or is it seagulls? I can't remember. And ducks. So that's kind of cute. So the station appears to no longer be a station. It's a KFC at one end and it appears to be a live music venue now. I mean, they've kept all the detailing. looks absolutely stunning. They've not gutted it, well not from the outside anyway. I don't know what's going on on the inside. So at least the building's still here. Yeah. Hard to see inside because of the, uh, the glass, but uh, it looks like they haven't completely gutted the whole thing. Right, well, I need to go back across the road. the Midland Hotel from the other side. This is the side you recognise from the photographs and things. Little seahorses at the top of the uh, entrance. It's really beautiful. I love this hotel. I would love to stay here just once. I'm going to have a look at the prices but I bet it's way out of my league. I mean, I just treated myself to two chocolate croissants that cost me £1.89 and I winced. <laughs> the st 
darlings are bathing in the uh, the gutters. <laughs> right, let's press on to my final Right, let's go, let's go to our next point of call. So I'm going to walk to my last landmark and then I'm going to walk back um, so that I can show you, where is it, yeah, it's the pier. We'll walk back, show you the pier. There's a, a fairground here. I don't know if it's a permanent one or visiting. And you know, I used to get those lovely promenade gardens. And they were always immaculate. And with well laid out flower beds and immaculate lawns. Well, they have one. Might be a bit hard to see because the, the sun is in just the wrong place for me to get clarity on any of my pictures at the moment. Snapdragons, I think. And all sorts of other things going on. So there's your. Not the way the paths have been left here. A bit covered by grass. I quite like that. So. I can tell. What am I on a path of the road here? It's a bit random. walk anyway. There's no real traffic. You can smell the sea. You can tell this is the main promenade. This is the tourist's hub. Perfect lawns and hedges. <laughs> Can't see the sea anymore. Where's it gone? If we can walk down the front instead of next to the traffic. Lots of fun artwork here. Lots of model birds everywhere. And look, there's more of the birds on top of the bollards. Here's a puffin. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a road now. This is, this is all parking. And I want to be over there, really. Well, let's go this way. Because now I'm at the beach again. It's getting 
quite warm. I think I might have to do this in the hoodie in a minute. It's just, the weather's just so amazing. The detailing on the walkways. I love all this attention to detail that they have here. And here it is. My last. My last uh, landmark. That's it. Born John Eric Bartholomew. 1926 to 1984. I can't believe he died that long ago. together this whole area for him, look. <laughs> All the famous lines are on here. Uh. There he is. So that's my last point of call. Eric Markham. As I was standing here, I got chatting to a retired couple. And they said, oh, can you take a picture of us with Eric? So we take a picture of him with him all the time. We live in Lancashire, and uh, we send the pictures to our, our sons who live abroad. One's in Dublin, one's in Australia. So I took a picture of them with him. And then um, they took a picture of me. Here he is by the seafront. Now apparently I have to go and look at the winter gardens, which is just here or just near the Midland. Um, so apparently that's that's an iconic landmark here. Another winter gardens because these guys used to perform here. So I'm going to go and see if I can find the winter gardens and then. Um, I'm going to walk back along, I'm not going to walk back along the promenade, I'm going to try and walk back along the, the beach as much as possible. I'm going to go back to the pier, walk the length of the pier. And then start to very slowly out, I'm going to find somewhere to sit and eat all my breakfast food. Show the flowers they've planted here. Got fortunes worth of flowers there.
and seagulls. Very round seagulls. So, let's see if we can find the winter gardens. Crazy parking prices here. Three hours is £4.40. So this is the winter gardens. I don't think it's open. Maybe you're getting around the back, I'm not sure. All empty shop units. That's the gates. So they've just done it up, but... It's hard to see any of the detailing. I don't know what's going on here. It looks like and that couple said they've just they've just done this up. It's as close as I can get to the beach on the way back to the pier. And there is the pier, well, there is of it right there. It's not really a pier, I don't think. Another cormorant. This building on the left here is the lifeboat centre. Look at all the curlews. Amusement park. I can't work out if they're unpacking or packing. So we'll walk down the pier. centre. I don't know that there's a lifeboat in there. I mean, yes there is. It is the actual lifeboat station as well as a shop. So it comes out there and it goes down the slip there. Thank you. 
lovely. of this beach. It's absolutely vast. And on the other side, you got the same again. Now this isn't the rhyme I remember. One for sorrow, two for mirth, three for a wedding, four for mirth, five for rich, six for poor, seven for a witch, I can tell you no more. That is not the rhyme I know. I don't know where that's come from. Never heard that one before. I thought this looked like a railway station. It was a ferry port. This was a ferry terminal.
It feels like a place you could live. But I bet this is rammed with tourists in the summer. This is quite a fun place though, I have to say. I think I will be back here again at some point. Up to the end. Those are oyster catchers, in case you're wondering. So here we are. We are at the end of Stone Jetty. Let's do a 360 before the next bunch of people walk along. Ready? I'm going to sit down. But what does this say? So I'm going to sit down here at this little bench. over the water and eat some food. back from Morecambe, almost entirely on the beach. 
and now I am. Oh yes, there's Haysham in front of me. I can see the graveyard. So. and do the same thing here. I'm going to pick up the next set of stairs and just walk as much of the beach as possible, take a slow amble. Yeah, it's already 21 degrees. It was 17 this morning. Amazingly warm. It's 21 now, but we've still got that lovely breeze. So, it's lovely. Tides well and truly out. And I have loads of battery left, so I'm just going to slow amble back and show you the route. peaceful getting down out onto the beach which was huge and there's nobody really there I reckon we can walk this people on these beaches because they're quite rocky. You can see the rocks starting to increase. There's a nice sandy bit here. I'll walk, I'll walk back along here. And then up the other side there. And then we'll do the same further on. are right down on the edge there, you can hear them. Imagine living up there and seeing this. Oh, 
Amazing. Really torn now between whether I like the beach more or the moors. Everything has so much to offer. everywhere. They're going to die of heat exhaustion. It's so hot out here now. Borough of Morecambe and Haysham, Sandylands Promenade, cliff section. This work was constructed by direct labour and completed in May 1931. Interesting names on there. One of the councillors is H. E. Shackleton. Climbing wall here. Ooh, and a nice squishy landing if you fall. I have climbed to try it. Well, once I climbed a, a climbing wall and didn't enjoy it. The muscles in my legs are pretty useless these days and I am not good with heights, so that was all pretty bad. Put these little benches. These big sea walls they've made, 
It's hard to get down on these beaches. You have to start at one end. I know there's one. Oh look, we can walk that. We're almost back. That's depressing, isn't it? I'm going to sit down for a minute. I've got so much time. Oh my goodness, I've been on my feet since, I don't know, seven o'clock, half seven? I've lost track of time. Yesterday, I walked in total 20 and a half thousand steps. And today so far I've done just over 15,000. Not quite 11 o'clock and I can already see where I need to be in the distance. So I'm not that far from the car now, which is a bit sad really because it's gone really fast. I must come back here though. This place is wonderful. I'd love to have spent a bit more time here. But if I get more good weather, I will come back and do the same thing again. down to the beach here and we'll see if we can walk the length of it and come up the other side. I think there's a way through but I can't remember. I end up going to walk all the way down and back again. This is the ultimate old-fashioned beach holiday, isn't it? We never did these growing up. At least not that I can recall. And I think I prefer to go out of season. This is really quiet, but I would imagine if the weather is like this at the weekend or during the school holidays, this place is probably rammed. And it's not really my idea of a holiday. I'm limited, of course, by being in a car. There's only, I don't think I could do more than one night in a car because you're not getting proper sleep and I don't do well on lack of sleep. Messes me up big time. Super 
rocky down here.
I've decided reluctantly to head home. It's about quarter past twelve. I've been back about half an hour, had some food, and I'm a bit tired. And I did start early this morning, so I woke up at six. I was out probably about seven, seven thirty. So I've done a fair bit of walking, done about seventeen thousand steps. So that's not bad. And it's an absolutely gorgeous day today, but it is really hot. It's much hotter than yesterday. I'm just seeing what that temperature's gone up to now. Um, let's have a look. Oh, showing 23. Showing 23 already. Yeah, it's warm. It's warm. I need to go home. Get all this stuff in the wash, get everything unpacked. I need to pop to Sainsbury's on the way back to a Sainsbury's that doesn't charge and get a couple of bits. I think we've done good. It's been an absolutely fantastic day and a half. It's not really two days, is it? Right, so. I don't want to go. I'm too tired to do anything. It's too hot to be out in the sun. I will get absolutely roasted and sunburnt. I'm trying to be careful, you know. So. Thank you for being with me on this two day trip, I hope you enjoyed it, um, any questions drop me a line and uh, catch you on the next one, bye bye.